everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish on the Movies, and today we are talking about episode four of The Alienist, and it, the title of the episode is These Bloody Thoughts. Well, Dr. Kreitzler still has questions, and is not only searching for the killer's identity, but trying to figure out why does he mutilate the bodies the way he does. Previously, he had asked Cyrus, his driver, how did it feel to kill someone? Today, he visits an old client, a woman, to ask her about the mutilation of the bodies. She offers that a man who enjoys being beaten is a bully, and a man who likes to inflict wounds has been wounded himself. She said a few other things, but those are what I wrote down. She also talked about how uh, people search for their opposites. And so uh, somebody who, who, uh, who's really intelligent searches for somebody who doesn't care about that intelligence at all. Hmm. That went kind of fast, so. Not for me. Yeah. I like to rewatch the episodes and I haven't rewatched it yet. Okay. Commissioner Roosevelt is hounded by reporters about the case. I think the corrupt cops have been feeding them false information to make him look bad. Don't forget he closed down the bars on Sunday, which really did make people mad, and that really did happen back in 1895, not 1896. So the public is a little bit angry with him. Okay, and they also wanted to know if the the murder victims were boys who were wearing dresses, but he didn't answer any of their questions. He just went into the police station. So he went inside and sat down, and Sarah was there too, and bad cop, cop O'Connor hands John Moore's missing sketchbook to the commissioner. Remember that at the end of the last episode, presumably, the killer had found it, and they showed him looking through it. How O'Connor got it is a mystery, but I don't think he is the killer. Do I think he knows the identity of the killer? Maybe, but I think the person that he and the ex-commissioner presume to be the killer is not the right guy, who is a man named Van Bergen. Remember, I talked about at the beginning of the last episode, there was a man eating lunch with his mom. And when they finally put the episode up, I watched it again because I'd come into it late. And they talked to, to him and his mother, and they said that he had been going to this brothel and people had seen him. And it wasn't a good thing, and so there have been, quote, some incidents. So I think they think he might have something to do with the murder, but I, I, I don't, I really, after this episode, he's not the one. So it's a red herring. So anyway, um, the question is, how did Detective O'Connor get that sketchbook? I don't know. At least it wasn't made clear to me. Meanwhile, back on the case, the twin forensic, forensic scientist returned to Castle Garden which is the official name of the last murder scene. It is a tall castle-like structure that they examine at the top and down on the bottom. I think that should have been the title of the episode. What, Castle Garden? Yeah. Maybe, because it was an interesting place. On the wall are small, gouged-out places. What made those marks, they wonder? Then on the ground, they find a special hook-like piece of metal that is used for climbing. The killer is a climber, another clue. Clues so far are the killer has a silver smile, likes high places, likes to be near water, and is a climber. But those don't have anything to do with why he did it. No, but <laughs> it still makes him different than somebody else. Also, Luke visits a dentist and discovered that the killer may have syphilis and is being treated with mercury. 
That would make his mouth silver. <clears throat> Sorry. A lot of little things happen during the episode. One big, big thing occurs near the end. Marco is going to talk about that. <coughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Marco. Well, they receive... Well, the, the Santorelli family receives a letter from the killer. And the letter uh, details what he did to the boy and uh, I guess why, he, not really why he did it, but just the fact that he liked doing it. And they give it to Mrs. Miss Howard and she gives it to the Scooby gang. And they all uh, sit there and read it and analyze it. And uh, they determine that, or no, they, they figure out that he really wanted Miss Howard to get it like he has a thing for her like he he's uh, interested in her of course and then that he's watching them in the restaurant and then they're all like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and this this actually I thought the killer was somebody from history because all along I thought this show was based on true events I didn't know that it was uh, fake and everything like that, so... Not all of it's fake. There's some historic reality. Yeah, not, Just not the yeah. uh, actual murderer. So, I I thought that the killer was Albert Fish. Because he was a pedophile killer. A uh, cannibal, too. And he liked to inflict pain on his victims and even inflict pain on himself. And he and he kidnapped a brother and sister, and, uh, and that happens in the show. And raped them and tortured them and killed them and ate them, and then he sent a letter to the family and told them all about what he did, just like this guy. And so I thought I I was like, oh, is it him? Is this show all about him? And it's like, oh, I, this show is fake. Oh. Dang it. Marco's really weird and he says weird things. And so I won't be that nice anymore to these wooden characters and a uh, horrible script. And especially this episode where they had to have another stupid sex scene. Yes, that's my only... Um, Pointless. That doesn't add anything. And the doctor says, why isn't killing the boy enough? why send the letter and it elates him he in the letter he says to see mrs santorelli suffer when she reads it and uh he also in the letter he talks about cannibal cannibalism around the world that people usually eat the butt and that the butt had fed him for a week <laughs> but that was really weird yes you don't need to give any more spoilers now well, do we want to tell them? need to watch the episode themselves. Well, there's a lot of stuff I don't even say, but it's so, not really meaningful, I don't think. There you go. Now, let's talk about, in terms of quality, uh, uh, I, I think the only thing that the show has going for it is Luke Evans and uh, Daniel Brühl. Okay, well, Marco has been reading reviews of the show where fans of the book are angered by the fact that the book and the show are so much different. It's true that I read the book many years ago, but I don't remember it enough to make comparisons. So for me, I only judge the Alien series as it is represented on TV. I'm judging it too. However, and I thought that the show was a true story and true characters, so I was always... Uh, being nice about Sarah Howard because I thought I thought that oh she's an actual uh, pioneer not really she doesn't even exist she's just a an agenda driven stereotype character just oh. there to stand around and be wooden and uh, serve an agenda and nothing more well I kind of disagree but 
I do encourage all to read the book because it is so good. My main criticism is they keep throwing mindless sex scenes into episodes. Last week we were spared. Yay! Today it was the Jew Jewish forensic twin and it lasted seconds, but still unnecessary, I believe. In the show, his brother even commented about it and said people were beginning to talk. I just think they're an unnecessary addition. And <coughs> I'm sorry I don't have any historical information to impart to you today. I tried to look up mercury as an old treatment for syphilis. It's just so unfathomable to me that people use such a toxic substance as a treatment for anything. It just blows my mind. So that's all I have to say about it. I still enjoyed the episode. And <clears throat> I love... Um, I love Daniel Brew and um, Luke Evans. And they don't really show the Commissioner Roosevelt very much. That's why I was I was really shocked that he was really Teddy Roosevelt. For real, I just thought they named him that like they named him that like I said this before. They named him after Teddy Roosevelt because I know people have done that. They've named their kids after some famous person, the whole name, the first and last name, but it really is him, and so I kind of wish they don't really talk about him much. He's uh, really a very minor character, and Marco says he did a class where they did some in-depth research on the presidents, and he said that the character on TV who is portrayed as Teddy Roosevelt doesn't really represent the way he was in real life. Mm -hmm. Like he was a lot more boisterous and forward and um he was and loud and uh, loud. obnoxious and he had to be because he was really up against a whole corrupt police department and like and he was there to get rid of the corruption i talked and, about that in this show he's kind of like oh this uh sly figure in the background that's you know he's really smart and, yeah and he's just uh really calm and collected that's not how he is that would be like that, that would be like Woodrow Wilson or something I don't know I've never um, he did an in-depth uh, history class and so they did a lot more research on the presidents had a whole thing on the presidents and which is really helpful you know so he knows more about Teddy than and me continually the show doesn't look good at all it looks really dull I mean it, it just because I've seen a lot they <coughs> they like people like to do a lot of th uh, projects that take place in 1800s and the, you know, the earlier days and and they always look better than they do and the, I, I think the best example that I could think of that's uh that's modern uh, would be Sherlock Holmes the Robert Downey Jr. version. I think that one looks really good and 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 it, it shows you that you don't everything doesn't have to be gray and lifeless and just like Ugh. I mean there can be colors, there can be smoke, there can be all sorts of things that make make it look interesting instead of just making Oh, we have to stick to the accuracy of the time period, so every place has to be gray and dull. Well, they did have coal. They used coal to for air, for their whole energy source, and that did make the city, as is Chicago, dirty looking. If it doesn't look and good, London. If it doesn't look good on film, it shouldn't be done. Mm, well. See, that's what I'm saying. Marco is the make your movie expert. I am just a person who watches things to be entertained. Well, so. I'm not entertained when I am looking at a screen and I see this lifeless uh, cardboard city. But although I did like how Castle Rock looked. Castle Garden. 
castle garden was. And I, I think it was cool. That was cool. But other than that, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, do you want to give the spoiler alert? There's just one big spoiler at the very end. Do you want to give it or let them let him watch it and find out for themselves? Do you think we should just let them watch it and find out? Well, it's inevitable that they would show the killer in full uh, detail. In the earlier part of the episode, we saw him uh, with uh, uh, another prostitute. It, but he was, uh, they didn't show his face really. It was dark. They're showing his shadow. Yeah. And he was lathering up his hands and uh, putting gloves on. And uh, then he wanted to take the prostitute away. And then at the end of the episode, they show him and he's all right and he's uh, asking for another prostitute. And I would have thought that. <laughs> all the other prostitutes, like, they would know this guy's taken multiple of, a, of them away, and so they would not want him in their establishment. Yeah. And so I find that kind of queer. Maybe the book does, uh, maybe the book explains it better, because from what I hear, the book is uh, better. And so, he, he looks kind of like a limp. Well, he's a. When they show him at the very end, and it's in reference to the letter that Daniel Brew is reading aloud at the table to his whole team, and they've all been brought there by the killer. They all thought, "Oh, uh, the doctor asked us to come." No, I didn't ask you to come. Oh, Miss Howard asked me to come. No, I didn't ask you to come. It ends up he got them all there so he could watch them read the letter and. I guess to see what they would, how they would react, because he talks about all that cannibalism and everything. But after they showed the letter, they reading the letter, and they said he's watching us, and they show him in a vision or like a dream sequence that uh, what he, well, I think he talks about what he did in the letter and how he did it. I mean, just to pick up the person, his victim, and so they show him doing it. And, I mean, it's not very long, and they don't show them for very long. They do, they do this a lot in modern-day shows where they they don't show the villain. Uh, they kind of hint at him, and they hint at his appearance, and then, like, episode three or four, they show him in full detail. And, like, they did that with uh, Netflix Daredevil. They didn't show Kingpin until, like, episode three or four. And he comes out, and he's really intimidating. So uh, it's not a very well written episode. It's it's really disjointed and just going from. It seems like it, there's no flow to it. It's just going from where they need to go to service the book. Okay, well, we gotta go now. We will be uh, reviewing. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein and a movie called um, Heathers. And remember, this is February, so we've named it Relationship Month. I'm not talking about lovey-dovey, necessarily lovey relationship, any kind of relationship. So Abbott and Costello, they were comedic partners. and And just so you know, Heathers... Although it it would seem like it would be a typical lovey-dovey relationship, it's not a love relationship. It's more of a... It's a destructive relationship. It's a destructive uh, but mutual relationship. Like, they're both trying to get something from each other. So yeah, We'll talk about go. that later. So, I hope you all enjoy watching The Alienist. If you don't... If you don't, then just don't watch it. Watch our reviews for it instead. Well, also <laughs> read the book because yeah, it's worth. It instead. is. It is worth it. I've read the book and I enjoyed it a lot. And I pro- I've seen other people who've read the book. They love. I haven't seen anybody who's read the book who didn't like it. So tweet, that's something. Tweet the to, to to Dakota fan and, and tell her a good place to get doing get an acting class. Martha, that is just terrible. And then tweet to Luke Evans and say, "Good job, sir." 
So, you are hilarious. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you later.